Hello, and thank you for joining me today. Today, we're going to be talking about the lookup function in Excel. It's a very useful tool, so let's go ahead and get right into it. We're going to go up to formulas, um, up in the ribbon. We're going to go up to lookup and reference, and we're just going to scroll down to lookup. Now, if you notice, there are two types of lookup functions. One is lookup by vector. One is lookup by array. We're going to go into detail in both, but first, we're going to look up by vector. Okay. So the first question we're asked is, what is the lookup value? And in this case, we're going to use this value right here. We're going to hit F4 to make it absolute. Now it's asking us the lookup vector. The lookup vector is just a fancy way of asking, where do you want the formula to look? Now there's some rules with this. First off, you can read down here. The lookup value must be from one row or a one column range. And that column or that row has to be sorted in order, either from least to greatest, well, from least to greatest, from top being the least and greatest being the bottom, left to right, least to greatest. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to select numbers since that's already sorted for us. And we're going to hit, again, make that absolute with F4. The result vector. Now, even though we selected a column for our lookup vector, that doesn't necessarily mean we have to select a column for a return vector. The only rule is that, or the rules are, that it also must only be one row or one column, and it has to be the same cell count as our lookup vector. So here we're just going to keep it simple and use the letter column right next to it. So I'm going to go here, we're going to select that, and again, F4 to make it absolute. We're going to tell it OK. All right, we're going to take that equation, and we're going to put it right here. There we go. OK, so if we see 4 is R, and... If I go ahead and change some of these, 17. Okay, so as you can see, is as I enter in these values, it scrolls down and it pulls the correlating value next to it. So what happens if we put in a value that's greater than our range? Let's say if I, our range goes up to 27. So let's say I put in 30. The formula, Excel is only going to go to the highest value and it's going to pull that, it's going to pull the return value from that. So even if I go to 100, it's still going to always pull the max value, which is 27. Now, if I pick a value, like let's say we have 9 and 10, let's say I picked a value between that, I said 9.5, the lookup formula in Excel is going to find the value that is less than or equal to. So it's always going to round down. So here we have 9, 10, we have 9.5. If I did, we have 2 and 3. Let's say I did 2.5. It's going to pull back W. All right. So the next question is, is what happens if I pick a value that's less than the smallest value? So let's go ahead and do the 0. Now all of a sudden we get an error. Now if you recall, I mentioned that this column here, this lookup value column, has to be in ascending order. So First off, let's go ahead and pick a value that works. We're going to say 5, and 5 correlates to t. Now, what happens if I took our lookup value and kind of jumbled it around? So I'm going to do that by sorting our letters in order from least to greatest. So I'm going to go ahead and go here, data, sort, and I'm going to sort by column C from A to Z. And if you notice, whenever I do that, we start getting errors. In some cases, we might get values, but rarely do they correlate to the actual value. So um, more often than not, it leads to an error. So that's something you want to avoid. If you do come across an error, check your lookup vectors and make sure they're sorted in proper order. And if I just want to change the return value, I can just go to my formula right here. And here we go. And what I'll do is I'll just move this over. Let's say I want to have the employees named as return values. Same thing as before. Just drag that over. Let's say I want to do 4. That's Mr. Simon. 11 so on and so on. So that's all I need to do to change that. Now if you also recall, I mentioned that just because our lookup vector is a row or a column, that doesn't mean our return vector has to be a row or a column. So let's see what happens whenever I change this. I'm going to go ahead and take this, and we're going to paste this as... Okay, so I've gone ahead and taken this column, and I have pasted it as a row, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change, I'm actually just going to start from scratch. We're going to do a lookup function. We're going to go lookup, and it's asking me the value. I'm going to select that. F4 to make it absolute. It's asking me my where it wants to look. Again, we're going to select the numbers. Again, I'm going to hit F4 to make that absolute. And then I'm going to go down here to this row, and I'm going to select that whole row. Again, F4 to make it absolute. 
And there we go. If you notice, we get the same answers whenever we put in value. So if I put in three, both of them change. The way this works is it looks up the value, it counts down to it, and then it goes to the adjacent or the other range, the return value range, and it counts from top to bottom or from left to right, and it just returns that value. Okay, if you recall whenever we began, we looked at a lookup function that uh, looked up by vectors. Now we're going to look at arrays. So again, I'm going to go up to formulas. I'm going to go to lookup and reference, lookup. This time I'm going to set lookup, lookup value array, and tell it OK. Same thing as before, it's asking me what value I want to look up. I'm going to select the same thing up here, F4, to make it absolute. Now it's asking me where it wants me to look. I can select as many cells as I'd like. So here I'm going to select the whole table. The thing about looking up by array is that it will always look in the leftmost column. That's the value to look up, and it will always use the rightmost column as a return value. So let's see what happens. We select everything. We have number 11. So we look here at 11. That's our leftmost column where it's looking, and it's going to return our rightmost column. Let's see if that works. There we go. Now if I did the same thing, and this time I'm just going to type in the function, look up. All right. And I'm going to go by the, the array value. So I'm going to go ahead and say the same thing as before, look up the same value. And I'm just simply going to select, I'm only going to select the two columns and limit my array. So that way my leftmost column is numbers and my rightmost column is letters. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And close parentheses. Now I'm able to look up numbers to letters. So otherwise, the more columns I select, so if I go ahead and I put in some values here, just random values, all right, there we go. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look up by array, look up. I'm going to select my lookup value, there we go, comma, and I'm going to select all of these cells right here, I'm going to tell it, there we go, and let's go with 16, let's see what 16 returns, there we go, if you notice, 16 looks up the less, leftmost value, and it returns the rightmost value. Let's try another value, so I'm going to go here, and we'll say like 25. There we go. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of how the lookup function works in Excel, how to look up by vectors, how to look up by arrays, and more or less how to use these functions for your own use and different and creative ways. So if you found this video useful, please click like and share with others. Thank you.